Hi, today I'm going to give you the foundational tools you need to create an automated dashboard on Google Sheets. Today we're going to be looking at a few tools. We're going to be using the VLOOKUP function, the Sparkline function, pivot tables, and data validation. And we're going to create a dashboard that looks something like this. Um, we're going to um, you can spend as much time as you want formatting it and making sure that it's clear and concise and you can spend hours designing your own automated dashboard so it matches your brand colors. But here's just a really simple way to um, visualize your data. So we're going to be working with this mock-up data and it's, let's just say we're working with a, an accessory company. They're selling bracelets, scarves, and necklaces and they've hired brand ambassadors or sales reps in different states uh, to sell these products. And we have the total amount earned by each of these um, representatives. And so maybe we want to compare two representatives at a time. Uh, we want to see how over the course of the um, allotted time the sales has gone. So we'll see um, the sales change in a line graph or a sparkline graph and maybe we want to see um, which state is doing the best in terms of sales so i have a new google sheets here with the same data and first things first we're going to want to create our um, dashboard sheet or wherever we're going to want to put our dashboard so we'll call that dashboard i'm just going to get rid of the lines so it looks really clear so First, let's start off by creating a geo map like what we, I did here um, that highlights the amount of um, uh, sales per state. So, and we want it to be up to date. So, what we're going to do first is we're going to create a pivot table by going up to data, pivot table. And we are going to want to make sure that we have no limit on E. So in case we add new entries, they will be included in this pivot table. So new sheet create. The value that we're looking at is the totals earned. And we're looking at that in relationship to the location. So for rows, we'll do location. We're not going to want to show titles, uh, totals rather, uh, because that will get in the way of um, our map and we're not looking for totals we're looking for uh, in terms of certain areas so here we go and now we can create our geo map now you can see that we've used the sum function or the pivot table has to add up all of the um, earnings in California Georgia Massachusetts and um, New Mexico so let's highlight these two columns and we will create a geo chart so first things first it shows you the data in a column a chart and we don't want that we are going to want to edit it in terms of a geo chart but we don't want this zero data that's coming from all of these extra cells that have no data and so we are going to go here, we're going to go to setup, and it's not going from A1, but rather starting at A3. And so that is going to only give us from here down. And as new entries come in, they will be in row 7, row 8, and other, um, and keep going down where this blank will remain at the top. So A3 is the beginning of our chart. Now this is one way to present data. It's neat, but I think that geo charts are really easy to understand. So we are going to go to setup. We are going to choose geo chart. And right now it's in a global view. It's coming up with California for Canada. We don't want that. So we're going to go to customize geo and choose the United States. And we can change these colors. Um, and it's that simple. Um, so now that you have your geo map, you can see that as these values change, so let's add, let's make California or 
what's this New Mexico let's make New Mexico 3000 instead and you can see right over here that New Mexico has gone up to 3000 total and uh, so and it stays updated just like that Great, so now we can copy this and bring this over to our dashboard. We can format everything later. I probably should have done the darker color for the higher value, but that's just design. So we'll bring that over here. And we need to keep this table, this tab up because it's where the pivot table is and holds all the data and it will update rows. So we can't delete it, but to make things cleaner, we'll just hide this sheet. Next, let's create a stream uh, sparkline graph and sparkline graphs are really easy they are great to um, have in any type of Excel sheet but they are super easy for um, dashboards because they're really clean and just easily show the, the data so we're going to create another pivot table here and again we're going to make sure that the E value goes on and isn't restricted by just these entries and the value that we're looking at is again totals earned and we're examining that over time and so you can see that our pivot table again has ordered our dates from uh, least to greatest so um, which is chronological order we're not going to show totals because we're not interested in that for our sparkline graph and we are going to go back to our dashboard because that's where we want our sparkline graph and we are going to enter the formula sparkline go back to this pivot table and use b3 but to b infinity so that if we add more entries um, it will stay up to date so now we can press enter and you can see our little sparkling graph over here to make it bigger we'll just highlight how big we want it to be with all the cells and we'll merge all the cells so it's one big cell that holds the spark line so format merge cells merge all now we have a big spark line so you can see that on the 7th of may it started off really high at almost $400 then went up a little bit and then severely plummeted and um, you can see that that matches here so the 300 value the 400 and then down to the 58 so that is our sparkline graph and now we are going to do one more thing which is using data validation to compare to different um, representatives so we're going to hide this sheet so that it stays active but we don't have to look at it and we are going to create a, another pivot table again keep the e values open we're looking at comparing representatives in terms of how much they sold so totals earned is the value in rows we're looking at last name we don't care about grand totals and we are now looking to create that chart that compares the two so the first thing we need to do okay so we're going to create a data validation box so first things first is create a data validation box by going here under data 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 validation um, from a range we're going to choose um, a3 or we'll just here like this and we'll do a3 and change this to a now we have a list of all of the names and as you can see if we add another name let's do um, Massachusetts spring five six we'll just do a whole other entry um, let's make this 523 say she sold $200 and she sold a necklace 
um, you can see that that data has now been entered spring here. And let's see, she was from Massachusetts. And you can also see that it's been updated here, $1,000. So in total. And so that's good to know that it will stay updated. And now next, you're going to need to use the VLOOKUP tool. So we're going to use the VLOOKUP tool. We're interested in this search key and how that changes. Our range is, um, let's do A3 to B infinity in case we add more people. And the index means that the number of columns, which column we're referring to, so this is index one, this is index two. So we're looking at Jones in relationship to index two, which is the total sum. So we're gonna put two. And so Jones made 450, uh, Butler made 90, and you can see how this continues to change. It's Lucas 302. Great, so we're gonna do that one more time. We're just gonna do another data validation. And great. So now we can create a chart with these two, um, these two different comparisons. So we want to maybe show a bar graph that shows Lewis in comparison to Jones. So we're gonna highlight these values, insert, chart, and here we go. And we can change the colors and everything and format that differently. But so the first um, representative is on the left and the second is on the right. And so as we change Jones, uh, Lewis in relationship to Gross, you can see that that changes. Let's do um, Smith. So that's a really easy way to look at the different, um, your different representatives. So now you just need to copy this and put it on your dashboard. Um, except for for now, for VLOOKUP, you are looking at these values. So you're going to want to make sure that it aligns with the sheet. And so we're just doing A3 to B, just as we did before. And we're going to do this exact same thing. So right now it's correlating to this value on this sheet, but we're just going to make sure that it is aligned with the right data on pivot table eight. And now we can create the chart. And we're all set. And so if gross makes more money, for example, Let's change hers to 504. We can see that now there's an even greater gap. And so what was at 304 is now 504 in comparison to Butler, which is only 90. So now you can move these around, edit it, change the colors, do everything you want. And as your third party updates your Google Sheets, um, it creates new rows, uh, edits already, inserted rows, uh, this data, data on your dashboard should be updated and change and easy to visualize and great for showing to your boss and creating an amazing, easy to read dashboard.